I'm going to be speaking on audit and quality indicators. I'm going to be more optimistic in my talk today and tell you all the good things that we can actually do in our country. How do you define quality? It's the standard of something as measured against other things of a similar kind. Why do we need quality? It's time that we've evolved, now we've started to run actually. Emergency medicine is a big thing in our country. Now it's time for us to improve standards. There are a lot of teaching programs in our country. More and more young and budding emergency physicians are actually coming out with a lot of uh, hopes and dreams of helping patients get quality care. When you do a quality audit, obviously it helps you to identify problems and rectify them. Happy patients will tell someone that we got very good care here, but if your patient is unhappy, they're going to tell a thousand people, don't go to that particular hospital. Especially with the advent of social media, you see it every day, complaints against hospitals. And that's bad for the reputation of the hospital. So it's good for you to do quality audits to identify problems. Rather than quote literature, I thought let me discuss a few quality audits that we are doing in our own emergency department. Our hospital has uh, finished the triennial survey of the Joint Commission and we are also an NABH accredited hospital. So these are some of the quality indicators I thought that we will discuss that we do in our departments. Uh, return of spontaneous circulation in cardiac arrest. The percentage of patients who come into the emergency department who can be converted as an inpatient. The problem of delays in admission, the time taken for referrals after stabilizing the patient. Number of wrong first referral, I thought that was extremely important. That tells you whether your emergency physician is actually examining the patient properly, getting a proper history. Percentage of discharge against medical advice. Time taken to initiate thrombolysis in the emergency department. And how many patients actually revisit the emergency department within 72 hours and also ambulance turnaround times. The, the paramedics and the emergency physicians take all the codes in the hospital other than ones originating from the intensive care. Now this was mainly to identify pitfalls in established code blue protocols. So over a period of one year, we found that we had about 60 code blues. Number of successful resuscitations was 57. Don't look at me very strangely when I say 57. That means we got return of spontaneous circulation, that's it. It's very important to note that the 48 hour survival rate was only 12. And the number of patients who leave the, ho leave the hospital alive, it's probably even less. I mean, that's the data all over the world actually. In hospital cardiac arrest have a very high mortality. So what are the other aspects that we studied in this? Whether the adherence to the ACLS guidelines was there. So we usually have a form that is filled up by the nurse of that particular ward. Whether what time did the paramedics come into the ward for the code. Whether they identified the rhythm properly. Whether defibrillation was done properly. And if adrenaline was indicated, was it given every three to five minutes? Was CPR being done properly, the quality of CPR, whether the bag and mask ventilation was done well. So all these things are, are you have a nurse coder who actually does this. Now there's nothing that's not really, I mean, it's quite ethical in the sense, don't admit patients who don't require admission. I mean, look at patients who are sick, resuscitate them, make sure you have facilities in your hospital and try to convert them as inpatients in your hospitals. Now that's an ethical way of doing things, improves your revenue of your hospital so that you can ask for more equipment to take care of patients. So this helps you to know the trend. It's also a tool for staffing, budgeting and for procurement. So it's very important to have an audit as to number of patients or the percentage of patients who you can turn as an inpatient. And we found that our average inpatient conversion rate is about 69 percent because our hospital is a little away from the city and it's a tertiary care hospital with a very good trauma center and more of a referral hospital. And our outpatients, they function till about 8 o'clock in the night. So we don't get the run-of-the-mill patients. We do get patients who are quite sick 
And that's why I think our conversion rates are almost 70%. Another important thing that happens is a lot of patients tend to stay in the emergency department for a long, long time. So we thought let's do an audit and see how long they actually stay in the emergency department. So we kept a benchmark of four hours is the maximum time a patient should spend in the emergency department. We found the average turnaround time outliers. That means the number of patients who stayed for more than four hours in the emergency department was almost 13%. Now these are the kind of patients who required multiple specialty cross-references. Gone are the days when your patient is only a hypertensive or only a diabetic. Now your patient is a hypertensive, diabetic, ischemic heart disease. Somebody comes with uh, uh, shortness of breath. You could have a renal failure, you could have ischemic heart disease, you could have both together. So after the initial resuscitation, sometimes these patients, before they get into the intensive care, might require multiple references. Now there are some patients who come in very sick, who need to be dialyzed in the emergency department. We do have a couple of beds in the emergency department where patients can be dialyzed. So patients come in breathless, they are uh, put on non-invasive ventilation and dialyzed for three to four hours or even more and then shifted to the intensive care. So all these takes time. So all our resources are again, uh, uh, you know, mm, contributing towards the patient and we are unable to see other patients. And the oft-repeated uh, 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 problem of non-availability of beds in the intensive care units. Another important uh, uh, one is cross-reference turnaround time in the emergency department. Now this is the average time that is taken for any cross-consultations by various specialties in the emergency department. Suppose you have a patient uh, who has come with a di diabetic ketoacidosis, you have resuscitated, you have given your insulin and things like that and then you call in the uh, uh, persons from general medicine to come and see the patient and admit the patient. So we want to know how long does it take for the consultant to come in and see the patient. The earlier they come, the patients can get into the uh, uh, hospital faster. We found that the, uh, uh, the benchmark was about 30 minutes and we found that the average cross-reference turnaround time was about 32 minutes. The delay could probably be more in surgical specialties where your surgeons are held up in the theatres. Ours is a teaching hospital. So there may be a lot of academic work also involved. The doctors may be in classes, they need to finish the classes and then come in. So we need to evolve a system where the patients are seen within 30 minutes of call. We did try and do uh, things like that. If the consultant doesn't come within 30 minutes, then we will call the consultant who is supposed to do it the next day. Then we decided not to do that because that would uh, create a lot of animosity in the hospital. Another important one is wrong first referrals from the emergency department. So when a patient comes in, the emergency physician has to thoroughly examine the patient from head to toe, resuscitate if necessary, and then call one speciality to come and see and admit the patient. Now if I call a speciality and they come and they feel it is not their problem, then it is a wrong first referral from the emergency department. Again that reflects on the quality uh, of uh, uh, the uh, care that has been given by the emergency physician, though it may not be true all the time. The common areas of confusion is usually between urology and general surgery or a patient comes with a bleed. You diagnose, you intubate if necessary with a low GCS and things like that, you call in the neurosurgeon. The neurosurgeon comes and says, uh, it's a big bleed, there's nothing much I can do, let's call the intervention radiologist. The interventional radiologists say, get a neurology opinion. So these patients tend to stay much longer. Another area of conflict is medical and surgical uh, uh, gastroenterologists because there's always an overlap between these two. Of course, we need to find ways and means of uh, uh, reducing the time taken. Percentage of against medical advice discharges from the emergency department. That means your patient comes into your hospital, get seen, resuscitated if necessary, then the patient has to get admitted into your hospital. The patient is quite sick, would worsen if he leaves the hospital and goes to another hospital. So these patients are branded against medical advice. When we look at the average uh, AMA discharges per month, it was almost 4%. We kept a benchmark of 5 and sometimes we, it also increased. But over a period of time, we 
actually went, did an audit and found out what are the main reasons why these patients are leaving the hospital. And the most important thing is affordability issues. You have to pay for care. If you want good care, you have to pay for it. There are a lot of patients who are unable to afford care. And that's the main reason why they leave good private hospitals and get into government hospitals. Some of the other things are insurance now. Now there are some insurances which cover uh, only in certain hospitals. So we do leave, uh, uh, a lot of patients leave because of that. How were we able to reduce it to 1% almost now? We have another hospital which caters to the socially, uh, I mean the economically uh, poorer group. And we do uh, try and get beds there in the intensive care so as to transfer these patients there so that they can get good care in our hospital itself. Initiating thrombolytic therapy within 30 minutes of arrival in the emergency department. We are having a lot of problems with this. Not everybody can actually afford to get in uh, to a cath lab and have stents put and things like that. And there was a lot of time being wasted in the emergency department because the patient's attenders are unable to take a decision. Even to buy streptokinase, which is about 2,500 uh, 2, rupees. So patients were spending an hour or one and a half hours in ST segment elevation MI unable to make up their mind. So we decided to store at least four or five uh, vials of streptokinase in the emergency department. If the patient does not have money, unable to afford, we could take it from there and actually start initiating uh, thrombolytic therapy in these patients. Now that really helped us to uh, achieve our uh, benchmark of uh, 30 minutes of thrombolysis. Another very important uh, uh, determinant of uh, quality in the emergency departments is returns to the emergency department within 72 hours of discharge with similar presenting complaints. Now we were getting a lot of patients earlier, especially patients with uh, fever or pain abdomen. It could be a, uh, a small stone and the urologist feels that he does not need admission, he can go back. The guy, same guy comes back within a couple of days or an asthmatic or a patient with fever. So these are the common complaints with which they usually come back. So we decided that it's if the, uh, um, the threshold for admission should come down in these patients, especially patients with fever. We see a lot of dengue these days, patients coming in with lower platelets. So it's better that you admit these patients rather than send them home and they come back again with similar complaints. All these are pertaining to the emergency department, but what about the ambulances? Now, there are a few things that you can do for your ambulances too. I mean, we don't have a fleet of 100 ambulances. We have about five ambulances. And it's very important to maintain protocols, make sure that your ambulances is, uh, I mean, uh, cleaned every day. You know, infection control is a very, very important aspect as far as ambulances are concerned. Another thing we decided to do was look at turnaround time outliers in the emergency department. And for that, the accepted turnaround time for local, that means uh, on a 70 kilometer radius calls was about two hours. Now these are patients who are non-urgent calls, not urgent calls. Okay? And accepted turnaround time for outstation, that is more than 70 kilometers calls is about six hours. Our ambulances are not actually placed in the uh, uh, highways picking up patients. Now these are more mainly for patients for inter-hospital transfer or going home or coming into our hospitals for consultations. They, they, there were a lot of complaints from those kind of patients and so we thought we would do this. I think it's very important that we actually do these audits and these are very, very simple things that you can do. If you want simpler audits, just uh, do an audit in your emergency department from next week. A patient comes in with chest pain. How long does it take for you to get an ECG on that patient? Or another simpler one, a patient requires an X-ray. Now, how long does it take for your patient to go to the X-ray department, finish the X-ray, come back, you receiving the X-ray with the report? Now, that's an audit that you can give. Now, that's a very complicated process, even if I tell you it's very, very simple, because the patient comes in, you examine the patient, you write for the X-ray. The patient's attender has to go and pay for the X-ray. Then he comes back with the receipt. You have a transport boy there. The transport boy must be available at that time to shift the patient. The radiographer must be there in the x-ray area when the patient goes there. After that, the patient is brought back, all right? 
so this actually is a very so you it's very important that you write the process for each of these things and you find out where are the problems in these processes so that you can actually take steps to reduce the time taken that patients spend in the emergency department and they get quality care i thank you all for your patient hearing thank you